Hi there, Caffeine and Pixie Dust. I've met a lot of really cool people today and it'd be great if you could stop by too. And remember, keep aiming higher, further, faster. Hope to see you around. Duty calls. Hello and welcome back to Caffeine and Pixie Dust, where you'll find plenty of videos on how to plan your practically perfect Disneyland Paris trip, all the latest Disney news and of course quite a few Disney trip vlogs because I do love dashing off to Disneyland Paris and I might just have some adventures coming up and I can't wait to take you guys with me. So please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and swipe that alert bell so you don't miss a thing. So today's video has been requested by a viewer who's off to the lovely Disneyland Paris very very soon and would like my point of view on what I feel are the unmissable photo opportunities at Disneyland Paris. Now I think you'll agree Disneyland Paris is just beautiful and it's beautiful no matter the time of the day, no matter the time of the year, there is always something gorgeous to look at and gorgeous to have in the back of your photos. For example, if we just take the castle, first thing in the morning during extra magic time, you've got this beautiful pale pink castle popping against a beautiful blue sky if you're lucky during extra magic time, which is the perfect time to take a photo. But then later on as you're heading to dusk, we get sort of a lovely make it pink, make it blue sky with sort of cotton candy pink fluff clouds in the background which again makes the castle absolutely beautiful and then into the night it's covered in twinkling lights all of these stages of the day make sure that the castle is the perfect backdrop for your photo so whether you're looking at filling up an album full of Disney memories or whether you want to bring a little bit of Disney goodness to your Instagram grid then Disneyland Paris is the perfect backdrop for your photos and there are lots and lots of hidden places in and around the park so in this video I'm going to be sharing with you what I feel are really the unmissable photo spots in and around the parks and some of them I have already taken photos at, and if so I will pop them probably around here so that you can have a look at what I'm talking about. Other ones are still on my Disney wish list. So in upcoming trips, I will be making a beeline for those areas because I want to take some photos there. Now, what I would say is the photos I'm gonna talk about in this video, you know, it depends how important getting photos are for you. Personally for me, I do love to take Disney photos, but I tend to take them on the way to something. So on the way to my favorite ride, on the way to my favorite character meet or lunch, I will take some snaps and I will sort of have a rough idea of what I'd like to take a photo of, but I don't personally let it kind of run my day because I am there to have fun, I'm there to enjoy the park either with family or friends, but then taking photos is also a little bit of good fun and it's something to look back on and really remember happy times in and around the park. Now what I will say as well is that I'm not at all a professional photographer, um, I tend to use my handy little iPhone for the photos, um, I will use the camera that I'm using to vlog right now every so often which is a G7X Mark II, but for the most part I do use my iPhone because as I say, I do take photos on an ad hoc basis. I just sort of whip it out my bag, take a quick photo, possibly a quick selfie. Um, but I do like to kind of play with angles and I do like to pay, play with the framing of the photo as well because there's so many beautiful things to capture at Disneyland Paris. It's just a case of having fun really. So what I'll do is towards the end of this video, I will go through some of my hints and tips on how to take kind of some practically perfect photos in and around Disneyland Paris, well my hints and tips anyway. As I said, I'm not a professional photographer, but I know what I like and so yes, I thought I'd share that with you. But what I'll do now is I'm going to go through the different areas of the park in rough order, all the little kind of hidden photo opportunities or lovely places that you might want to sort of have your group photo or maybe a sort of a selfie or something like that and just sort of go through them so that if you hear about something you like you can note it down maybe keep it at the back of your mind for when you're there ready with your phone or with your camera so the first one main street and the castle i mean this is just iconic it feels like you can't go to disneyland paris without getting at least one maybe 10 photos of yourself in front of the Disneyland Paris castle because it is just beautiful at any time of the day. As I've said, it's stunning. And also from every angle as well, I'm yet to find a bad angle for that castle. It's just beautiful. Now, what I'd say is that it is lovely to try and get that kind of iconic photo in front of the castle without lots and lots of people around you with like an empty main street. But sometimes this can seem impossible because the parks get so, so busy because everyone's dashing around and everyone wants to get that photo as well. But there are a few things you can do. The first thing is utilize extra magic time if you have it. Now, extra magic time um, you will be able to use if you are staying on site in a Disney hotel or if you're holding a Magic Plus or an Infinity annual pass. So you'll be able to actually access the park, get in there nice and early, meet some characters, jump on some rides, but also take some photos. 
Now when I say go in for extra magic time, really if you want to get that kind of empty Main Street castle shot then do head in there as early as you can. I'd say as close to 8am as possible because a lot of other people want that photo as well and just make a beeline for the position that you want to kind of take your photo from. Um, I mean a good position if you have got an empty Main Street is literally down kind of in the central plaza, you'll then have the castle behind you and it's really beautiful. However there is something else you can do as well if it is a little bit busier than you'd thought or maybe if you had a bit of a lion there is a really fantastic spot to the left of the castle as you look down main street it's like a little courtyard and it's fenced off a little bit and it's a little bit lower than the bridge up to the castle now this is a really good place to stand no matter the time of day because if you get the angle right you can actually get a photo in front of the castle kind of but without lots and lots of people because even if there's lots of people on the bridge if you can take it from slightly lower down then it will look like it's just you in front of the castle living your best life so that's always a good tip is that little kind of area to the left of the castle at the front also another kind of iconic I'm using that word three times now iconic photo um, to take in front of the castle it was with an empty main street at night Again, you might think, my goodness, how long do I have to wait for that empty main street? Now, it can kind of vary depending on the time of year, how cold it is, what the weather's like, but generally the way to get that photo is to watch illuminations and then to go and have a look around the shops while gradually main street will empty. This will take some time. And also, please do bear in mind that, you know, the cast members do have to go home. They do need to go to sleep. So don't sort of think, oh, I'm gonna stay there till like one in the morning to get that perfect shot. But no, you can sort of loiter, have look around the shops have a bit of poke around do some of your shopping until gradually main street clears and then you can head on down to the bottom of main street in front of the castle and get that perfect shot now we haven't quite done it amy and i did try one night we were gonna wait right to the end but we just got a bit tired and it was our last day so the photo i'm going to put up here is as close as we got and um, what we actually did in this situation is we just went straight down to the kind of rope at the front and people had started to come away already um this was a great photo it wasn't obviously all the way down Main Street, it was quite close up and we might give it another go, never say never. But no, it can make for a really good photo. Another thing I'd say is before you actually get in position, do have a bit of a play around with your camera or your phone, adjust the lighting, maybe the focus to make sure that you get that perfect shot. Because obviously once you've taken that photo, you can't really go back because everyone wants to go home. So yeah, make sure that you're ready to capture that perfect empty Main Street photo. Now the next few areas I'm gonna talk about are back up Main Street. So imagine we've seen the castle in front of us and then we turn around and we head back up Main Street as if we're going towards the Disneyland Hotel. There's lots and lots of hidden little photo opportunities down the side streets because the Imagineering at Disneyland Paris is just amazing. The detail is astounding. Honestly, every single time I go, I spot something new and I probably take a photo of it because there's always so much to see. So the one I'm gonna talk about first is Minnie's house. So imagine you're right at the top of Main Street and you've got the um, Liberty Arcade on your left, the Discovery Arcade on your right. If you head towards the Liberty Arcade, there's a beautiful little house and it's got a little veranda out the front and some little steps coming down, all decorated with flowers and wooden Mickey heads. It's absolutely picture perfect. Now this is where Minnie or Pluto, or sometimes depending on the season, Marie from Aristocats will actually do their meet and greets. But in between meet and greets and after they've finished, this can provide a really wonderful photo location because it's really, really sweet. The detailing is gorgeous. You've got flowers, you've got lovely painted woodwork, and it's a lovely kind of area to just stand on the veranda, maybe coming down the stairs and just get some really great photos. My ones I'm gonna insert here so you can have a little look at. Um, I think we took these sort of later on in the afternoon from memory because it was on our Halloween trip. So I think it was about four o'clock, something like that maybe, because it was definitely very empty. Um, but no, it's a really, really cute place to get some photos because it's always very pretty no matter the season. They always decorate, it looks gorgeous. And the next place I'm gonna talk about isn't hidden away, it is straight right in front of you, slap bang, as soon as you walk in through the gates, but it is the bandstand right in the middle and at the top of Main Street. This is a gorgeous place to have photos. Again, they will decorate it depending on the season, but it's really lovely because you've got all around you, behind you, you've got Main Street with all the Disney detailing and gorgeousness, and then in the distance, you've got the castle. What I would say again is if you want this photo and you want to get an empty Main Street, I really would make the most of extra magic time, get in there bright and early, maybe pause there quickly for a photo before dashing down Main Street to get the castle photo. 
because it will fill up people will want to sort of be heading down towards the castle and to go and queue for princess pavilion nice and early but it can make for a really really lovely photo and also i found generally if people want to have their photo taken actually in the bandstand they will form a queue and people are pretty polite so you'll hopefully get that photo again i guess you could wait right to the end of the day when you're sort of closing down main street as it were when you've got your main street photo actually go down to the gazebo bandstand not gazebo and um get some photos taken then because of course you'll have all the main street lights twinkling in the night as well which should be really really beautiful now the next one is a very very sought after photo opportunity so we've left the bandstand we're walking down main street and on your left you're going to see walt's restaurant which i love by the way absolutely love it in there um and you will see a little road a little side street down there on the left by waltz and if you follow it down a few doors down there is a very famous door and it is the casting door. Now these doors exist in other parks as well, but this is the one for Disneyland Paris, and here is my photo here. You might recognize this casting door because it is quite popular. A lot of people tend to take photos, put them on Instagram, all that type of stuff, because it's kind of iconic. It's hidden away, it's hard to find, but it's a lovely photo to get. And if you are traveling around the other parks as well, what a collection to have. You could have them all in a row in a frame of all the different casting doors. And I just think it's a really nice bit of detail as well. Now the photo here that I've just shown you and waving my finger around, this one again was taken during extra magic time. Now it's not so much that there's going to be a massive queue for this because people don't really know where it is, unless they've watched this video of course, um, but the lighting is beautiful. In the morning, first thing in the morning, the sun is just shining down and the lighting is gorgeous. So if you get a chance, I would recommend popping along in the morning and just making the most of that really lovely natural lighting as well. Next up, I'm going to talk about a very, very, very pretty pink porch. Now this pink porch, if you go back onto Main Street after getting your casting door shot and you have a look over the road, you'll see Main Street Deli, which by the way is a beautiful place to go and grab a sandwich, grab a hot chocolate, grab a cookie, because the decor inside is amazing and they've got beautiful stained glass in there as well, so it's really worth going and having a look. But if you walk past Main Street Deli, down that little side street on the right, you'll see signs for piano lessons and all sorts, and you can hear the piano lessons taking place, which is wonderful detailing. But if you follow it on round, it sort of curves around and you'll see a side entrance. Now this entrance is actually a kind of halfway down entrance to get onto the Discovery Arcade, which runs parallel alongside Main Street. As I said, you've got the Liberty Arcade on your left as you look down, and on your right you've got Discovery Arcade. But as you go round here, there's a little kind of hidden away pink porch. Now it looks like sort of part of a house and the windows from the other houses go round, it's absolutely gorgeous. But the thing about this pink porch is it is just so pretty. It is all pink, it is all white, the lighting is so beautiful, even on a gray day. I think it's because the color of the paint kind of pops it will just make any of your photos look really, really beautiful. So if you get a chance, I would definitely recommend popping along to the pink porch and having some photos done um, because it's really, really nice. It's a nice place to kind of have maybe a group photo. You could all line up along the veranda or you could maybe be coming down the stairs showcasing your favorite Disney bounding outfit, but definitely add this one to your wish list because it's a really lovely photo opportunity. And again, not everybody knows about it. So now we've visited our lovely pretty pink porch, we're going to head back onto Main Street USA and head down towards the castle. We're going to keep on going until we get to the bottom and then we're going to take a right. Now when we get down there you will see the castle stage. The castle stage is a beautiful location where quite often parades and things will stop off and do shows and it's right in front of the castle kind of from a slight angle on the right. However it can get quite busy because lots of people walk up and down here to get through to Fantasyland. So what you can do is if you're in front of castle of the castle stage and you look behind you there is actually like a balcony. No, so you if you walk back around and go past the annual pass office you'll see the actual steps to go up to this balcony. This is a really good place to get some photos because even if the park is really really busy and really heaving and everyone's taking lots of photos this is a little bit higher up it's kind of elevated so if you stand up on that balcony and the person taking your photo maybe steps down a couple of steps you will be in the foreground of an empty space with the castle beautifully behind you and depending on the time of day you'll get some amazing lighting there as well so that's always a good place to get some photos if again you want to get that kind of empty 
castle shot but maybe the park isn't actually that empty so definitely make a beeline for there so there we go if we imagine that we have taken that perfectly beautifully framed photo in front of the castle we've come down from the balcony we're going round in front of the castle stage again and following the road down eventually you'll see in front of you the beautiful pastel toned colors of it's a small world because you'll see it really dominates the kind of horizon in front of you. Now, it's a small world, it is beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. And to the right of it are some gates. Now, during the day, these gates might be open because they will obviously be used for the parade to come through. But also actually during the day, they're open so you can have a bit of a shortcut around to Discovery Land, which is always handy when the park is a bit busy. But when the gates are closed, They've continued the theming and the colours of It's a Small World onto these gates, which makes them absolutely gorgeous. They're kind of ice cream toned pastel hues and they're all these different colours. So again, they make for a really lovely group shot or if you have an outfit that would be beautifully set off with all these kind of pastel -y tones, then I definitely would add this one to your list. This one is firmly on my wish list because we haven't actually done it yet. So on our next Disney Lads trip, we will be going there and we will be taking photos. So hopefully, keep an eye on my Instagram you'll see a photo there very very soon. Now as we move round past It's a Small World into Fantasyland there are so 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 many photo opportunities and beautiful spots to capture some lovely memories so I'm going to look down and read off my list. First of all is on the teacups. You cannot beat a teacup photo when you're whizzing around and the background's all blurry and you are just having so much fun. Do whip out your phone, hold it very very safely obviously and if you have a camera strap make sure you've got it nice and tight so you don't have your phone sort of flung off um, but no it's really really good to get a photo on the ride because I think it kind of captures that movement that excitement that fun and again all the pastel colors and the lighting are really really gorgeous so maybe if you don't want to risk your phone maybe take the photo before the ride starts that's probably the safest advice actually so don't listen to what I said before um, also there is behind the teacups the Mad Hatter's tea party which is all set up so this is a really really cool kind of location because they've created a table full of the most delicious treats they're not real you can't eat them I'm sorry but it looks really really yummy and at the head of the table you've got this great big ornate armchair a red chair with the Mad Hatter's hat suspended above it this is a great place to get photos it's a great place to strike your best Mad Hatter pose and it's really really good fun I would say you do get a little queue there every so often um, but yeah it's definitely worth stopping by for a moment getting that photo if you can and then carrying on with our Alice in Wonderland theming if you go into the Alice in Wonderland maze which you really should do because it's so much fun especially again when the park is a little bit busy it's something nice to do is just pass the time and sort of make the most of your time in the parks without feeling a little bit stressed so no do go for a wander around the maze and then in there you will find the great big Cheshire cat smiley face with the eyes going round and round and round now this is a really really great place to get photos done because Again, it's one of those kind of iconic landmarks at Disneyland Paris, and it's always popping with colour no matter the season. They always plant it so well so that there's always lots and lots of colour there. So yes, do make sure you go check out the Cheshire Cat. And also, when you actually get into the maze, there's the beautiful tower as well, which in the last couple of years has been repainted, so it's really, really popping with colour. That makes for a really colourful photo backdrop as well. Now heading back into Fantasyland, up past the carousel, you are surrounded by all these gorgeous fairy tail kind of buildings and the giant beanstalk and everything there is a photo you do have to take if it's there because every so often it must get pulled out but there is the sword in the stone in front of the castle you can't imagine a more perfect photo now you could take it from either angle I think the angle I prefer to take it is if you are pulling the sword from the stone actually go in front of the castle because then you get the beautiful shape of the castle behind you and as I said there is no bad angle for this castle even from behind it's got this gorgeous kind of wrap around stained glass it's just gorgeous so that's really nice because you will then get the castle behind whoever's pulling the sword out of the stone also depending on the time of the day you might get the sun behind the castle which always makes it look kind of interesting on the other hand, you could turn it around the other way, take the photo with kind of fantasy land laid out behind you. I guess it depends how busy it is and whether you're fussed about whether you've got people in the background or not. But for me, I like to have a castle in the background because I do love that castle. 
And let me know if you pull the sword out of the stone because I've not seen anyone do it yet, but I have seen it missing every so often. So it's definitely intriguing. Also continuing on from the sword in the stone, if you're visiting around Halloween, they will decorate it beautifully as kind of Maleficent's area with kind of thorns coming up and a dragon formed out of these thor um, thorns. And again, this makes the most amazing photo backdrop because they'll have kind of dry ice pumping out as well. And I know that um, Amy and Kat and Rhea got some amazing photos on our Halloween trip because they went when it was nice and empty during extra magic time and they had time to take all these photos with kind of the thorns in the background and the sun behind them so it made it look really mysterious and quite dark so do check out that area during Halloween because it's really quite special as well. Now another lovely little photo opportunity which is quite hidden away but you probably have seen because a lot of people take photos of it is Cinderella's carriage. So just to give you an idea this is down by Lobos de Sundrion restaurant. In front of the restaurant is a lovely courtyard and in there is Cinderella's carriage. It's absolutely beautiful. When you're actually dining in the restaurant you can see it kind of glistening through the glass. It's kind of wibbly wobbly antique glass and it just sparkles in the sunshine. But if you're just popping by and want to grab that photo you can go on into the the courtyard and stand in front of Cinderella's carriage and channel your inner princess and get a lovely lovely photo because that's definitely a lovely one to add to the list. Now those are just a few of the photo opportunities in Fantasyland. To be honest you could stay there all day and take so 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 many photos because there's so many lovely Disney details, the Imagineering is amazing and the colours are just gorgeous. They range from the most sort of ice creamy pastel tones through to some really vivid colours around the Alice in Wonderland maze and you've got kind of gold and ornate and stained glass. There really is so many different opportunities to take photos on the carousel, all sorts. So what I would say is just have a bit of a mooch around, you know, when you're dashing in between meeting your favourite character, jumping on your favourite ride, if you see something that catches your eye, do stop, take that shot, because there are so many lovely places in and around Fantasyland and the rest of the park, but we have more to go on to, so for now, we're going to bid adieu to Fantasyland, but yeah, please do leave some time to have a bit of an adventure and a bit of an explore yourself, because there are some great photos to be had. So next, imagine we're leaving Fantasyland, we have walked past the Sword in the Stone and we are taking a right and we're going past the castle. Now we're not actually going to go in to see the dragon, we're going to keep walking around the outside of the castle. You're going to come to kind of quite a quiet path. Again, I'm going to give you another little hint to get that perfect castle shot because this is a really lovely angle to take a photo of the castle. You have kind of the front of the castle but then you have kind of the back as well and the trees in the foreground and the green hill. Again though, you're not going to have loads of people because you can't see the crowd from that point of view. And okay, people do walk up and down that path but it is quite quiet. So as long as you've got a couple of minutes to wait for people to pass, you can get whoever you're taking the photo of in the right position and get a really lovely photo. So yes, do have a look at that place. Also another really, really good place to get a photo is a little bit further down. So if we continue down that path, and you'll see that you've got um, Adventureland to your right. You've got that lovely, great big archway with the sparkling blue lights. If you turn back and look at the castle, you've got what looks like a totally different castle because you have sand and you have kind of more exotic greenery and like a stained glass lantern hanging down. That again makes for a really lovely photo opportunity because it's a bit different. It's not just sort of the normal, you know, square trees and green grass, which by the way, I have no problem with. I think they're beautiful, but you've got the sand and that slightly more kind of exotic, unusual feel. So that's a really good place to get some photos as well. Now, moving on into Adventureland, as we go in, you'll see that you've got um, Cafe Agrabah to your right, and then you've got the Aladdin's kind of walkway to your left. There is the most beautiful kind of mosaic-y tiled wall, and that makes for a really lovely place to take photos as well. Here's my photo here. This was a really nice place to take a photo because it was very quiet, I love the way the colours kind of popped and also it was quite cool because when we were there it was very very hot but near the kind of Aladdin's passageway and everything it's nice and cool and the smell is amazing, it's like sandalwood and musk really really beautiful but no that's always a good place to take a photo as well. Now I feel a little bit mean because I have focused mainly on Fantasyland but of course there are so so many photos that you can take in the other lands. In Adventureland you've got all the exciting kind of backdrop of the pirate ship behind you, all the creaky rope bridges you can be crossing with the lands laid out behind you. You've got a lovely pirate ship shot actually, gosh try saying that quickly. <laughs> if you're walking towards the Skull Rock Caves you go over a bridge and you've got a beautiful viewpoint of the pirate ship on the water with white sands in the foreground and the kind of 
trees swaying in the breeze that's a lovely lovely place to take photos um, also sort of just in and around the caves can make some really interesting backdrops as well and then as you go on through I'm gonna pronounce this incorrectly so please forgive me but you've got Le Cabain de Robinson like the Swiss family Robinson tree that's obviously the tree apparently um, but yeah if you go up there not only is there some really interesting stuff in there because they've got kind of the rooms all set up and that can make for an interesting photo but as you go all the way up to the top you will have a beautiful view across Disneyland Paris with the castle, Tower of Terror in the distance and again it doesn't matter the time of day you're going to get an amazing photo. Um, for example we went up when it was kind of dusk going into night and all the little fairy lights were up and it looked really really beautiful so yes I would suggest as well heading up there to take some photos not necessarily with yourself in the foreground although you can as long as you're careful with your phone um, but just lovely sort of panoramic views of Disneyland Paris it's just a really gorgeous place to go and visit and also it's a little bit more peaceful sometimes because not everybody climbs to the top of that tree so it feels like it's a little bit of a hidden away corner of the park as well which is nice also another special mention is of course Frontierland you cannot beat the theming in Frontierland. It's absolutely amazing, down to the way they've done the lighting, the street signs, it's just brilliant. So do make sure that you take time to just walk around and soak up that atmosphere, that vibe. Um, but with regards to photo opportunities, I really enjoyed when we went to Boot Hill Cemetery because we went there last Halloween when they just kind of opened it up again. I think it was literally the day they opened it. So we went for a bit of a scamper around the cemetery to have a look at all the details on the gravestones and everything and see if we could hear the heartbeat. We couldn't that day. Um, but actually we took some photos there and it was really, really nice because you have kind of the great big tall pine trees and the kind of uh, terrain of like frontier land but it's also a little bit different so if you want to get a slightly mysterious vibe to your photos maybe if your outfits you're bounding kind of a bit more frontier land phantom mannery halloweeny that type of stuff i would recommend going along to boot hill Cere uh, cemetery because they've got some great kind of beautiful areas that you can frame some really nice photos so here's one at boot hill cemetery taken by the lovely amy i believe um but yeah it was really good fun to scamper around look at the details and also you get some lovely viewpoints of big thunder mountain as well with kind of trees in the foreground now if we're coming down from phantom manor um which is beautiful in its own right let's be honest and of course you've got to go meet mickey mouse if he's there as well because that is an unbeatable photo opportunity um if we go down and we sort of look down you will see big thunder mountain all laid out across the lake again you can't go away without a photo of Big Thunder Mountain it's absolutely gorgeous and especially when you've got kind of Molly, Gra Molly Brown in the foreground as well you can get some really lovely photos around kind of dusk and twilight when it's a little bit emptier and all the fairy lights are lit up as well I've got some really lovely photos of Molly Brown in front of Big Thunder Mountain then and good luck trying to get the train whizzing down the track and splashing the water if you time it perfectly you might just get that shot but no do have a good old scamp around Frontierland the decor at any time of year is fantastic, but at Halloween as well, it's pretty special. It's definitely a sight to behold. Also, don't forget, you've also got Discoveryland, which has got some really sort of funky steampunk detailing as well. Orbitron looks absolutely beautiful when it's sparkling in the sunlight. And also at night, it just, they light up all the neons and things. So if you are going on Orbitron, it's really beautiful. Not necessarily to take a photo, but just to enjoy the lighting in, around the area because they kind of put like red up lighting in the waters and the fountains, kind of as if you're going back into the main park, which looks really different, really kind of sci-fi. But then they also turn up all the kind of neon lights in and around Discovery Land, which looks really, really cool. But, you know, there's loads of photo ops. If you're looking for kind of a really lovely place to take a photograph, then I would always suggest um, maybe kind of around the lake around um, Nautilus, you could get a photo with Hyperspace Mountain in the background. And the thing is, Hyperspace Mountain has got the most beautiful kind of steampunk decor to it as well. So yeah, do go and have a bit of a nose around. They've got some really fantastically shaped trees and topiary as well, which is very kind of 1950s, which is kind of cool. So now we've had a good old dash around the park. We've been up and down Main Street a few times. We've found all the little hidden away places. We've been down to It's a Small World. We've gone through Fantasyland. We've gone through Adventureland, Frontierland. We've quickly popped to Discoveryland. And now we're gonna head out of the main park and go over to Walt Disney Studios. Now I haven't got as long a list for Walt Disney Studios because it's still very much being developed. There's lots coming and I'm sure there's gonna be so many amazing photo opportunities with all the new developments. I'm so excited, um, but for now I have got some special mentions that we always make a beeline for or are on our wish list. I say it's like the royal we but I'm talking about the Disney Lads crew because that's when we tend to take lots and lots of photos. We tend to make a little bit of time to make sure we get some great photos because it's always good fun. 
So over in studios, the first kind of iconic thing you're gonna see is the statue of Walt. When you come in through the main entrance and you've got the Hollywood sign in the background and you can either go off to the left or off to the right, it's lovely to get a photo kind of leaning against that fence with Walt behind you because it's got a real different feeling in Walt Disney Studios. It's kind of very, you know, art deco, 1920s, 1930s. You've got the Tower of Terror in the background. It's really a good place to get a photo done because it kind of will remind you of scampering around the studios and having all sorts of fun. And also in front of Tower of Terror, there is the most beautiful um, sort of painted wall. I think there's four of them. They've got kind of like faux archways with like a starburst. It's in a lovely kind of mint green and silver colour and they've got stone benches in front of them. I did take one photo which I'm going to put here but I would like to go back at some point and get some kind of photos from further away maybe showcasing a certain outfit or something like this because that was actually a sneaky selfie. Um, but yes I would love to have a bigger picture because the wall is absolutely gorgeous and again the lighting if you catch it at the right time of day is really really beautiful. The only thing that stopped us a couple of times is I think we were there kind of midday and the sun was just beating down and you couldn't stand there without going like that which doesn't make for the best photo. So yeah, maybe head there around dusk time would be a nice time, around golden hour when you get that gorgeous golden lighting, that would be a perfect time for it. Next we have the Place de Remy fountain. So if you're heading down to Place de Remy where you've got Bistro Chez Remy and also the Ratatouille ride, again, the theming is amazing here. It's literally like you're walking around downtown Paris and you're just soaking up the sounds and the smells, it's beautiful. And they have a really gorgeous fountain there, which has got the ratatouille rats and kind of champagne bottles um, sort of throwing out water. Depending on the time of year, they might be frozen if it's the winter. But they, that makes for a really lovely photo, either on its own with everything else in the background or maybe with yourself in the foreground. It's a really good place to have some photos done. And then I would say moving through the massive archway, you move through to Toy Story kind of playland. And again, there's loads of photos to be taken down here. That wall itself is really funky because it says Toy Story. The next one I'm gonna mention is the parachute pick because you have the parachute drop ride and then you will have a setup kind of when you're queuing to go in and out. There's like a big parachute with like the um, straps coming down and handles and you can actually kind of lift yourself up and have someone time very, very well a photo which makes it look like you are falling. So if you have a chance, do go and do your own little parachute pick there and then talking about Toy Story again if you um, move on up sort of as if you're just coming into Toy Story Playland you'll see the massive iconic Buzz Lightyear statue and you'll hear him from far far away as well and behind you you've got strung up these kind of giant fairy lights as well which at dusk they light up it looks really beautiful so do make sure you get a photo in front of Buzz Lightyear to prove that you were definitely there because yeah it's lovely and colourful really evocative and a lovely happy memory of scampering around Toy Story Playland so imagine we've been dashing around the studios, having all sorts of fun, hopping on our favourite rides, meeting our favourite characters, eating our favourite Disney snacks, and now we're going to mosey on back to the main park, possibly stop off at Cafe Fantasia for a cheeky glotini, depending on the time of the day, but there is another photo opportunity on the way, because my goodness, how beautiful is the Disneyland Hotel. I love that hotel so much. It's just gorgeous. It's Victorian themed, pink, white. It's like a giant, beautiful cake. It's just glorious. It literally does it like it's frosted with kind of all the white woodwork and the beautiful twinkling lights. And of course the giant Mickey clock as well. Um, and it is literally the gate to Disneyland. You've got Disneyland written over the front. So it's a wonderful photo to have. So in front of the Disneyland hotel, you have um, the Fantasia gardens and fountains, which are beautiful. And sometimes they put color in them as well, like the lighting. So they make some really lovely photos and there is like a balcony like a viewing platform which is the perfect place to get a photo because you are front and center in front of the Disneyland Hotel with the sign with the fountains 10 out of 10 perfect however if you are there on a Saturday that photo is going to be bit Z. Not only are you going to have to queue for quite a long time to get that photo, but the likelihood is you're going to have a lot of people in kind of the background, possibly even the foreground. So again, if you want to kind of get that empty shot, there is a slightly sneakier way around this because there are gazebos, not bandstands, getting it right this time. There are gazebos dotted around um, Fant uh, Fantasia Gardens. And if you go to one of these, 
it's lovely and quiet. You can go there for a bit of a sit down, a bit of a break, and they've got little brooks of water babbling around. So it sort of feels quiet, it feels cool. Um, and it's a really lovely place to just hang out, to be honest, in between parks if you wanna take a bit of a breather. But if you go to these gazebos and have some photos done, not only have you got beautiful framing of kind of the wood posts that you can be leaning on or something like that, you're shaded, so if the sun is beating down and it is midday, you're not gonna be kind of giving it this in the photos. Um, but also, you have got the Disneyland Hotel behind you, but everyone in the background will kind of blur into the distance. And also you have the greenery, you have the gardens in the foreground. So if you wanna get a photo in front of the Disneyland Hotel, but you want it to feel a little bit more sort of natural with a bit of greenery, or you don't want to be battling the crowds, I would recommend popping over to either gazebo and having a go, having a look, see what you think. So that kind of rounds off the kind of list of the unmissable photo opportunities that I've either taken photos at or are firmly on my wish list for our next Disney adventure. Do check out my Instagram because that is where I put most, well, all of my Disney photos. So on our upcoming adventures, if I find any new photo locations, if I stumble across some amazing lighting, some amazing backdrops, I will be putting photos there. So do go and give me a follow if you'd like to keep an eye on those. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through my top tips on taking those practically perfect Disneyland Paris photos. Now, I know, as I've said, I am not at all a professional photographer. I will be snapping away with my iPhone for the most part, but these are just some of the tips I've picked up along the way that have really been helpful. Kind of trial and error, I've worked out what works and what doesn't work for me personally, so here we go. So the first one, which kind of feels like it's an umbrella tip for everything Disneyland Paris, is if you have extra magic time, make the most of it. Head into that park as early as you can, as close to 8 a.m. as possible, because you will have an empty main street. You'll have a beautiful castle photo. You'll have that lovely light of first thing in the morning with a blue sky, hopefully, and you will be able to kind of adventure and explore all the little hidden areas without having to queue, without having to bustle past people. Um, and you'll get some amazing kind of panoramic photos as well without people in the foreground. So yeah, I would make the most of extra magic time if you have access to it. My next tip is that later on in the day around that time before dusk you will get the most amazing lighting some people call it the golden hour it's kind of when the sun is a little bit lower and a little bit softer and everything is kind of imbued it's a good word isn't it I haven't used that for years <laughs> with a kind of golden light and it just makes everything sparkle and everything shine so if you are in and around the parks around that time before you dash off for dinner or before you dash off for the next ride that you want to hop on do have a look and think shall I get some photos now because quite often that is the best light in the day and it's something to definitely take advantage of. Now as we know Disneyland Paris is just beautiful. No matter the time of the year, no matter the time of the day, it can make for the most beautiful subject of your photos and also the most beautiful backdrop for your photos. However if you are visiting during a certain kind of festive period, maybe Halloween, Christmas, oh my goodness they will go to town with the decor. There will be barely an inch that isn't covered in some kind of pumpkin-y garland or sparkly Christmassy garland, especially, you know, down Main Street, the decorations are just amazing. So do make the most of this. For example, Minnie's house that I mentioned at the top of the video, when we were there for Halloween, they had like Halloween garlands and pumpkins all over the place. And that made some really fun photos. So yeah, do make a, do sort of make advantage of all the lovely seasonal decorations because they add a bit of interest to the photo, but also they will remind you of that season being there, what it felt like, what it smelled like, what it sounded like. It will just evoke that lovely memory. So yeah, make the most of those seasonal decorations because they are practically perfect. Now my next tip may not be amazingly insightful but it's something I always do. In fact I drive everyone I'm with mad because I will do it all the time. I always take lots and lots of photos because the thing is if you have waited and waited or you've got there super early for that empty main street and you're in front of the castle and you're ready to take the photo and you blink and it doesn't make for the best photo. It might look like you're a little bit bored at Disneyland Paris having a snooze. Um, so what I would always suggest is take as many photos as you can. So if you've got the burst um, sort of uh, function on your phone, maybe if you're using your smartphone, or if you've got like an iPhone and you've got live photos, now I know sometimes you look at live photos and even though you're choosing, the, you get the chance to choose the photo you want, the quality might not be so good. 
but I would always rather that and get a really good photo where everyone's smiling, everyone's got their eyes open, everything's happening at the right time, than take one photo where someone's got their eyes shut, someone's sneezing, has been known, and you haven't got the photo you want. So definitely take lots and lots of photos, and if you're asking someone to take a photo for you, don't feel worried about asking them to just take loads, take loads and loads and loads and loads, because you can always go through and just delete, 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 but it means that you've got a better chance of getting that perfect photo, which is what it's about. Now, speaking of someone else taking your photo, please don't be worried about asking a cast member to quickly pause and take a photo for you. If you want to have a photo where you're all in the group or if you want a photo of you from further away, not at like arm distance, do ask that cast member because I have yet to ask a cast member who isn't happy to stop and help because ultimately they want to make your day magical at Disneyland Paris. So do feel free to ask them and also quite often their framing and their angles are on point because they've taken so many photos. So yeah, do do feel free to ask them. Also do keep an eye out for kind of the official photo pass photographers because depending on the time of year and how busy the parks are sometimes they will have uh, photographers like in front of the castle or in studios with like special frames you can hold and stuff so if you do see that do make a beeline for them because they take some really really good photos and of course if you have got the photo pass then you've got them all ready to print off at home as big or as small as you'd like and they are beautifully taken so for my next top tip let's picture the scene imagine you're either visiting Disneyland Paris on a solo trip which is great fun by the way or you're there with a group and you temporarily get separated from them maybe they've disappeared off to buy some candy floss bigger than their head or something like that and you see the perfect photo it's the perfect photo opportunity the lighting is lovely you are looking fantastic your hair is doing the right thing this is the moment for the photo but you look around and there is no one to be seen no cast member to ask literally nobody what you're going to do what you're going to do is you can use your phone or your camera and use the timer setting on there to take a really lovely natural selfie Here's an example of my selfie. Now in this situation, I was dashing up Main Street and I decided to cut through to go up the Discovery Arcade and there, resplendent, was the pink porch. It was gorgeous, the sun was shining, it was perfect. And I was in my Mary Poppins dress and I realized I hadn't actually had a photo in my Mary Poppins bound. So I thought, I'm gonna jump on here and have a go. Now I had had a bit of a play with the kind of timer setting on my phone before and I just thought I'd go for it. So I kind of propped up my iPhone on, I guess you call it the balustrade, the pole thing on the porch and set the timer, I believe for 10 seconds, took a couple of steps back, shook off any kind of nerves about how daft I'd look with people walking past and just did a big grin did a few big grins and had my Mary Poppins carpet bag up nice and high as you could see it and took the photo and actually I was pretty happy with the photo so it just goes to show that even though it was a selfie officially it kind of wasn't just arm's length you know I was able to step back and get a nice bit of the background and the foreground and I was happy with the results so if this is something you think you might like to kind of have a go at what I'd suggest is have a bit of a play on your phone or your camera with the timer setting Work out kind of what you're comfortable with, what you want to do with your face, what you want to do with your arms or your legs so you're not feeling all kind of awkward and then just think about where you might want to take these photos and that means that you will not miss that practically perfect photo even if people are off eating candy floss or you've just adventured off to Disneyland Paris on your own. So my next top tip is kind of about playing with the kind of framing and the angle that you're looking at for your photos and this is very much a trial and error thing and it might be something that's best done when you're kind of, you've got a couple of minutes to stop and pause and take those photos rather than kind of running trying to take a photo diagonally while you're dashing off to the princess pavilion or something but it can make a huge difference to your photo what i would say is even if you are planning on putting that photo straight onto instagram don't have it set on the square kind of framing on your phone because this will automatically frame everything which of course yes makes it easier to put on instagram because it's already done but if you take it in either portrait or landscape you can then kind of choose where your frame is going to be you can choose the bit of the photo that you want to draw your kind of viewer's eye as it were to um you do using the kind of golden ratio situation i don't really know too much about it but i know enough about it to kind of get by but no you can choose the framing of your photo and really make the most of it so don't automatically snap it square also think about what you want to actually get in that picture do you want to make sure that you have got the castle at a slight sort of as the focus behind you have a little play take a few moments move the camera around don't be afraid to ask the person you're taking the photo of um, or who is taking your photo to have a bit of a play around so that you make the most of that photo because sometimes just moving over a couple of inches or changing the framing of your picture or the angle can make a really big difference and make that photo perfect but i think the most important tip of all these tips is to enjoy it have fun 
it is great to get those perfect photos. It is wonderful to have your social media flooded with Disney goodness and Disney magic. Everyone can see how much fun you've been having, but the main thing is have that fun. You know, maybe think about the photos you want to take, maybe have a bit of a rough wish list in mind, so that as you dash through places, you'll think, oh, actually, I want to stop off here and get a quick photo. That's cool, but do make sure you're having the fun. Have the fun, jump on the rides, eat the snacks, meet the characters. Really, really enjoy scampering around Disneyland Paris and making the most of your time there because my goodness, it goes so fast when you're there. It feels like when you're waiting for a trip, it takes forever and as soon as you're there, it's like double speed. So yeah, enjoy the parks, but also have your camera, have your phone ready to take some photos. Also do remember to take an external charger for your phone or maybe some extra batteries for your camera. I take about four for this one, just in case I really get through them. Um, I never do, but then I'm a bit more sort of calm and ready so that you can charge up your phone because you will use your phone so much when you're there taking photos, taking videos, checking the app, checking the sort of wait times, that type of stuff. And it would be really sad if you came up to the perfect photo or video opportunity and you had 7% on your phone. So do invest in a portable um, charger for your phone, but ultimately have fun, enjoy. If you see the perfect photo, pause, take it, snap it, go off and adventure some more. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been useful. As I'm, you know, I'm sure my list will get bigger. As I visit more, I'm sure I'll find more opportunities that I want to take advantage of um, but for now that's where it's at what well, I'd love to know uh, what your favorite photo opportunities or locations are in and around Disney parks in all the different lands over in studios please let us know the photos that you always make a beeline for what in your opinion are those iconic photos I'd love to know so please do pop them below but I hope you've enjoyed this video if so please do leave me a holographic sparkly thumbs up, share, comment, subscribe, all those wonderful things, and I'll see you real soon. Take care.